Hello all, my name is Yash and in this video we will learn about how to launch a coroutine as well as what are the different scopes of coroutine. So let's get started. So here I have created one project called as YT coroutines. This is the new project, we do not have any added dependencies yet. So let's create one Kotlin file here. I'll go to this uh, new Kotlin file. In this file, I'll select it as demo. Now here I have this demo KT. I can have one main function here. So as of now, I'm giving you the very basic idea of how we launch a coroutine, how we use it and other stuffs so that you will be ready how to use that in the project. And do not worry about it. We will create a standalone project with the help of the coroutines in the upcoming videos. So here I'll try to access the coroutine. So to access coroutines, let's try it to write global scope but as of now we do not have it because we have not added the dependencies for coroutine so let's try to add the dependencies for our coroutine now to add the dependencies i'm sure you are aware of it but still for those who don't know where we add the dependencies it is at the module level of your project so here you can see we have two build gradle files but we need to add the dependencies at the module level so if you'll go inside this and make sure you have selected this android here instead of this project and in case if you have selected this project then the build.gradle file will be in the different place that is inside your app and here you can find the build.gradle so now let's go back to android i usually prefer to be in android tab now let's try to get the dependencies i'll write here coroutine kotlin dependency i'll prefer to go to this uh, developers android.com and here we can find the dependencies like this so we can copy this and paste it here. Although you can remove these brackets if you want. Uh, let's try to press uh, option enter or alt enter in case of windows and change this version to 1.6.0 which is the latest one. Sync it and now maybe we are ready to use this global scope. Let's try to test. So yeah, you can see this Kotlin X core routine. We have got this global scope dot launch. So this is how we launch a core routine okay this is on a very high level i'm telling you this i'll let you know about all the scopes in the core routine but let's start with the global scope first now to launch a core routine we usually use a few functions like launch and async we will learn about this launch and async in the next video in this video we'll be focusing on the scopes so now there are different type of scopes here you can see this is the global scope now what is global scope if we are using this global scope that means so this particular core routine will be there till the time our application is there that simply means as it is at the global level so let's suppose if i've used this uh, global scope core routine here in the main activity that means the scope of this core routine is at the application level and not for this main activity level so basically we should always avoid using global scope dot launch because this simply means that we are telling our application do not destroy this core routine ever let it be there till the time application is there which is not good obviously so this core routine should ideally get finished once its job is done hence the reason we do not use global scope dot launch until unless we have a very strong reason to use it so this is the demo video kind of just wanted to let you know guys about the scopes that's the reason why i'm using it here so let's try to print something i'm printing here hello yash now I'll try to run this project. Let's see what happens. So basically you can see the output here. So this line is not printed here. So here's the basic idea of coroutine, how this co coroutine works internally. So I'll request you guys to see the previous video of this in which uh, I've discussed in a lot of detail about the coroutines, how they work internally. So you will get to know about the coroutines in a much better way in this video if you have already watched the previous one. I'll give you the link in the description as well as in the i button here. So now this output hello yes is not printed here. So let me tell you the reason why. So every core routine launch in a separate thread. So let's suppose instead of this core routine, I'll create a separate thread and try to print the same line in the thread. And let's see what happens now. Let me remove this. So let's try to print it again and let's see the output. So yeah, you can see the magic here. If I'm using threads, this line is getting executed. But in case of core routines, that was not getting executed. To understand this, let me tell you something. This is my main function. That means I've started my main thread from here. So let me uh, try to print the thread name here. Thread dot current thread 
dot name so by this line i'll get to know about the thread which is running at, at this line number so i'll copy this and i'll try to print it here again so let me add the print statement as well so we have added the print statements here now let's try to check at this point of time which thread is running and inside this thread which thread is running so we will get to know about the names of the thread so let's run it again okay so now here we can see at the first line got printed we can see the main is the output that means at this point of time there's a main thread running as soon as we came inside this thread block and you can see there's something got printed as thread zero this is the name of this particular thread which is a separate thread apart from the main one so that simply means that our main thread is waiting for other threads to get completed and then it this line got printed hello yash and then our program is finishing so this basically means that our main thread is waiting for other threads to get complete but in case of coroutines let me replace this again with the coroutine global scope dot launch so now i'm i'm printing this thread inside the coroutine and we will see how this will behave so yeah you can see so these two lines are not printing here so the reason is our main thread always wait for other threads to finish but our main thread will not wait for the results of the coroutines it will just print this line it will see okay there is a coroutine i'll launch it and it will get finished so now let me do something let's try to sleep the thread for one second so what will happen now our main thread will print this it will launch a coroutine and it will come here and just uh, relax for the one second till the time this coroutine will gonna finish its job okay so let's check the output now okay so here we can see the output now it came inside the coroutine it had printed this default dispatcher worker one that this is nothing but the name of the thread so now this coroutine got a chance to run because our main thread is at the sleep state for one second and please make sure to not write this thread dot sleep in your production code because this is the worst line you can ever write in the code in android we usually do not use these kind of statements because because main thread is the very crucial thing and we do not want someone to just sleep this particular thread for one second because you can do a lot in one second so never write this i'm just showing you this uh, for the sake of this demo so there are different ways to stop this uh, i've shown you this thread dot sleep there is one uh, function called as join so i'll try to uh, make one variable uh, as coroutine equals to this so this variable will gonna store the result of uh, this particular coroutine and i'll try to write this coroutine dot join this join means that at this line we will wait for this particular coroutine to get finished and then we will execute the other line now you can see there's one error so in case of coroutines we cannot call any suspending function or any suspended line from other non-suspending function that simply means that you have to always call suspending function from an another suspending function but here we can see that i'm calling this from a main function which is not a suspended function so let's make it suspend and now you can see the error is gone and let's try to run this main function and at this time you can see we have not used any thread dot sleep so yeah the result is again same this particular coroutine got print i'm sure you might be having many different questions you might be getting confused by looking at the several things but trust me you will get to know about every single line of this in very detail in the further videos where we'll be creating a standalone project and i'll be explaining you why we are writing each line so this launch and also we can use there is as async so just do not confuse about this we'll be learning this in the next video also we will learn the about the dispatchers in the next video this is the basic functionality of any coroutine so in the next video we'll be learning about these all the launch async global scope and all the different scopes we'll be learning in the next video if you have even understood the 10 percent out of 100 trust me you are in a good pace so do not worry about it so if you have any other questions comment down below and let's meet in the next video